రమారెడ్డి గారు చెప్పండి సార్ మన సుబ్బరావు గారి డాటర్ సనిల్ల ఆర్ ఆల్సో జాయింట్ పేరు ఏంటి సార్ నేను అనౌన్స్ చేస్తాను పద్మ గారు కిషోర్ గారు పద్మ మేడం అని వచ్చారు ఎలా మంచి పద్మ గారు కదా ఎస్ కిషోర్ గారు ప్లీజ్ వెల్కమ్ దేమ్ నమస్కారం అండి నమస్కారం అంకుల్ మేడం సార్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ సార్ టుడే తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ సెంటర్ ఇస్ కండక్టింగ్ ఎ వెబినార్ ఆన్ ఇంజనీర్ వి సుబ్బారావు సిక్స్త్ ఎండోమెంట్ లెక్చర్ ఆన్ సెన్స్ ఆఫ్ అర్జెన్సీ టు డెవలప్ ది సస్టైనబుల్ ప్రాక్టీస్ ఆఫ్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ ఇన్ ఇరిగేషన్ ప్రాజెక్ట్స్ టు ఎవర్ ఇంక్రీజ్ ది వాటర్ యూజ్ ఎఫిషియన్సీ కేస్ స్టడీస్ టుడేస్ రెస్పెక్టెడ్ స్పీకర్ డాక్టర్ మొహమ్మద్ హుసేన్ సాబ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ Department of Civil Engineering, Gokraju Rangaraju Institute of Engineering and Technology, Hyderabad, Dr. G. Venkat Subbaya, my colleague, Andri Sakret. Hello, Dr. సార్ సెక్రటరీ గారు ఆర్ ఏబుల్ టు యూర్ మీ ఎస్ సార్ యు ఆర్ ఆడిబుల్ సార్ ఓకే సార్ రెస్పెక్టెడ్ స్పీకర్ డాక్టర్ మొహమ్మద్ హుసేన్ ఎఫ్ఐఈ ప్రొఫెసర్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ సివిల్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ గోకరాజ రంగరాజ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ అండ్ టెక్నాలజీ హైదరాబాద్ డాక్టర్ జి వెంకట సబ్బయ్య ఆన్రీ సెక్రటరీ అండ్ మై కొలీగ్ ఆఫ్ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ సెంటర్ ఇంజనీర్ బి ప్రశాంత్ ఏఎంఐ కమిటీ మెంబర్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీర్ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ సెంటర్ అండ్ కన్వీనర్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ఈవెంట్ ఫ్యామిలీ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీర్ వి సుబ్బారావు గారు మిస్టర్ వి కిషోర్ అండ్ మేడం పద్మ ఎలమంచిలి డాక్టర్ హనుమంతాచారి గారు ఫాస్ట్ చైర్మన్ శే సుబ్బిరెడ్డి గారు అదర్ కమిటీ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ సెంటర్ సెంటర్ అండ్ స్పెషల్ గెస్ట్ లైక్ ఇంద్రసేనారెడ్డి గారు థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ గెలెక్స్ ఆఫ్ ఎమినెంట్ పర్సనాలిటీస్ హూస్ నేమ్స్ ఐ కెన్ నాట్ సీ ఆన్ ద స్క్రీన్ ఫాస్ట్ ప్రెసిడెంట్స్ ఫాస్ట్ చైర్మన్ కౌన్సిల్ మెంబర్స్ కమిటీ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీర్స్ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ సెంటర్ కార్పొరేట్ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజనీర్స్ తెలంగాణ స్టేట్ సెంటర్ శ్రీ సత్యనారాయణ గారు హెచ్ఎండబ్ల్యూ ఎస్ఎస్బి ఇస్ శిష్య ఆఫ్ సుబ్బారావు సార్ హూ కేమ్ ఇయర్ అండ్ అటెండెడ్ ది గార్ల్యాండింగ్ అండ్ ఆల్సో శ్రీ విజయ్ కుమార్ గారు ఆఫ్ కోర్స్ ఇస్ నాట్ ఇంజనీర్ ది అసిస్టెంట్ కమిషనర్ ఆఫ్ పోలీస్ మై గుడ్ ఫ్రెండ్ ఇస్ ఆల్సో కమ్ టు అటెండ్ ది గార్ల్యాండింగ్ అండ్ దిస్ వెబినార్ ఐ ఆల్సో వెల్కమ్ హిమ్ అండ్ బిసైడ్స్ ది ఫ్యామిలీ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఇంజన్ లేట్ ఇంజనీర్ వి సుబ్బారావు గారు మీడియా ఫ్రెండ్స్ లేడీస్ అండ్ జెంటల్మెన్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ వన్స్ అగైన్ టు ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ అండ్ అగైన్ వన్స్ అగైన్ హ్యాపీ సెవెంటీ ఫోర్త్ రిపబ్లిక్ డే అండ్ టుడే ఐ ఫీల్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ గ్రేట్ ప్రివిలేజ్ అండ్ ఆనర్ టు బి ఎంఎస్ దిస్ వర్చువల్ అగస్ట్ గ్యాదరింగ్ అండ్ ఎక్స్టెండ్ ఏ వామ్ అండ్ హార్టీ వెల్కమ్ to the today's uh, eminent speaker dr mohammad hussain garu and all of you to this uh, engineer v subbarao sixth endowment lecture we are very fortunate to have eminent personality and a speaker and a master in bhagavad gita dr mohammad hussain garu fi and we thank him for sparing his valuable time to be ms this important event I am glad to inform that the Telangana State Center of the Institution of Engineers India has been regularly organizing 19 endowment lectures every year on the birthdays in the honor of eminent engineers like Engineer V. Subbarao, Engineer M. Tirupathiretti, 
ప్రొఫెసర్ కి గోపీచంద్ డాక్టర్ జె పురుషోత్తం ఇంజనీర్ జి ప్రభాకర్ ఇంజనీర్ కోకా కృష్ణమోహన్ రావు ఇంజనీర్ జె వి సుబ్బారావు ఇంజనీర్ టి హనుమంతరావు ఇంజనీర్ ఏపీ రంగస్వామి రంగనాథ స్వామి డాక్టర్ ఎస్ రాఘవాచారి డాక్టర్ నార్ల తాతారావు ఇంజనీర్ మాటూర్ గోపాలరావు ఇంజనీర్ గుర్రం కోటిరెడ్డి ఇంజనీర్ అట్లూరి వెంకటేశ్వరరావు డాక్టర్ జాన్ ఏ ముర్రె డాక్టర్ ఎన్విఆర్ఎల్ఎన్ రావు ఇంజనీర్ ఎల్ వెంకటకృష్ణ అయ్యర్ కేవి శ్రీనివాసరావు అండ్ ఎంఎల్ స్వామి డాక్టర్ ఏ రామకృష్ణ అండ్ ఇంజనీర్ ఐ బసవరాజు ఎండోమెంట్ లెక్చర్స్ దీస్ ఎండోమెంట్ లెక్చర్స్ ఆర్ బీయింగ్ డెలివర్డ్ బై పీపుల్ ఆఫ్ హై ఎమినెన్స్ విత్ కన్సిడరబుల్ ప్రొఫెషనల్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ టు త్రో లైట్ on important emerging topics of today's relevance i take this opportunity to brief you about the great engineer late engineer v subbarao garu he obtained bachelor of engineering in the year 1965 and he did his mtech in water resources in the year 1982 and also mtech in environmental engineering in the year 1986 he has attended several training programs including an orientation program for urban public health engineers at lawfrof university of technology united kingdom in the year 1991 late sri subba rao garu joined public health engineering department and the pradesh in the year 1965 and rose to the position of chief general manager engineering and he retired in the year 2000 he attended to investigation execution operation maintenance of water supply schemes and sewerage and sewerage treatment schemes the credit goes to engineer subbarao garu for remodeling of sewage system of hyderabad and sikindrabad at a cost of 327 million rupees and remodeling the existing sewage treatment plant for hyderabad at a cost of 43 million rupees and maintaining and operating it other important works carried out by him include urban water supply schemes of warangal nizamabad and sewerage of for guntur and rural water supply schemes in the telangana region his areas of spe- specialization our planning designing execution operation and maintenance of sewer sewer systems waste water treatment plants drinking water treatment plants and modern techniques of measuring and billing for drinking water he has also authored the book titled as accounts for engineers a handbook and published the book titled tender procedures jointly with uh, engineer g l rao FIE participated in various conferences and presented papers he was a recipient of prestigious award engineer of the year in the year 1997 jointly instituted by government of ap and the institution of engineers india ap state center then he took active part in various activities of the institution of engineers india at hyderabad he was honorary secretary of the then ap state center of institution of business india during the years 1998 2000 the telangana state center committee at its special meeting held on 27th may to the 2017 has agreed in principle to organize an endowment lecture in the memory of the great engineer v subbarao a former chief general manager of HMWSSB and also he was a past honorary secretary of the Institution of Engineers Hyderabad at that time AP State Center and every year on 26th January it is decided to conduct his endowment lecture and also present a medal and certificate to the topper of MTech of NIT Warangal with first class for over two years in water resourcing resources engineering but i would like to mention here I, we have not received any nomination from the nit 
uh, no uh, there was no response to our letter but however i spoke to uh, nv ramana rao garu he said he will be sending the this one we will be handing over the medal in appropriate time to the uh, topper of the mtech today telangana engineer v subbarao garu endowment lecture on the theme sense of urgency to develop sustainable practices of management in irrigation project to ever increase the water use efficiency and case studies i am sure you are all anxiously awaiting to hear the lecture from our eminent speaker dr usain sab thus i am limiting myself and hope that you will really enjoy this lecture at the end of uh, the lecture on behalf of the telangana state center of institution of engineers india and on my own behalf i once again extend a hearty welcome to the today's eminent speaker dr mohammad hussain a fie professor department of civil engineering and also ms padma elamanchali from usc and and son of let v subbarao garu uh, mr kishor and all of you to this important event before i call for delivering the endowment lecture may I request engineer b prashant amie committee member iai telangana state center and convener of the event to kindly introduce today's eminent speaker dr mohammad hussain fie thank you one and all but before i also give an opportunity after the speaker is completing for the family members to kindly say few words about his father so i over to prashant choudhury sir very good evening thank you for giving me this opportunity to introduce to today's speaker uh, dr professor mohammad hussain mohammad hussain ji and uh, uh, a very warm evening to one and all and uh, 74th uh, republic day wishes to one and all welcome to uh, avc e engineer v subbarao sixth endowment lecture on sense of urgency to develop, to develop the sustainable practices of management in irrigation projects to ever increase the water use efficiency case studies and uh, i am uh, uh, very much privileged to introduce today's speaker dr mohammad hussain who is really an uh, uh, out of uh, having bhagavad gita in his hand also like uh, uh, dr mohammad hussain is a professor of civil engineering and has obtained uh, his phd in water resource engineering from jawarlal nehru technological university hyderabad in 2002 uh, he has done his btech degree in civil engineering from national institute of technology warangal formerly rsc warangal and obtained his masters of engineering degree in hydrodynamic hydromechanics and water management from university college of engineering usmania university hyderabad and he has pg diploma in design and construction of concrete structures from anamalai university and another pg degree in mhrm master of human resource management from puducherry university he is a former irrigation engineer in irrigation uh, command area development department government of ap uh for 22 years out of 14 years he worked as a faculty member in water and land management training research institute known as volantari in hyderabad during his tenure in volantari he has trained hundreds of officers of agriculture department and irrigation department and thousands of farmers in the area area of irrigation management and associated issues under world bank aided hydrology project national water management project irrigation water management training of us aid and andhra pradesh economic restructuring project in participatory irrigation management he underwent many training programs in reputed institutes like aski imti uh, uh, engineering staff college of india iim kozhikode national geographical research institute iit bombay iit hyderabad iit karakpur etc he underwent 60 six week training program applied computer use in irrigation drainage in irrigation center utah university in utah usa he is uh, under his uh, under his guidance two batches of students won prestigious national award in ist nit kozhikode national award for best be project in civil and architecture during his period at mj college mufakamjan known as mufakamjan hyderabad he is former founder principal of malaredi institute of technology he has uh, he is currently guiding two phd students of jntuh in area of water resource engineering he has 36 years of professional experience and uh, he has uh, was former professor and hod gogaraju rangaraju 
Institute of Technology and is founder of energy conservation mission known as ECM in erstwhile AP State Center of Telangana Institution of Engineers, India. He delivered 13 management lectures, five technical lectures and uh, at Institution of Engineers, India, Hyderabad from 2001 to 11. He was resource person at UGC Academic Staff College of JNTH for topic on human resource management in engineering colleges. He was former member of Board of Studies Engineering JNTH. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now over to Thank Dr. Mohammad Hussain, sir. Thank you. Okay, I think a screen share I had to do. I'm just doing screen share. <laughs> so I welcome you all <clears throat> for this lecture on sense of urgency to develop the sustainable practices of management in irrigation projects to ever increase the water use efficiency case studies at the outset. So I'm thankful to the chairman and committee members of Institution of Engineers for giving me this opportunity to deliver this uh, <coughs> lecture. Uh, now, I just want to brief the outline of my lecture, today's lecture. So, is it audible, sir? Yeah, go ahead, sir. It is audible. And uh, this also, slides also are yeah, yeah, very much, very much. Okay. So the outline of my today's talk, the crop productivity per unit of water and project irrigation efficiency in all irrigation projects of the world. So they need to be urgently improved because the pop population is increasing and uh, we need to cater to the food security. This is essential for food security, nutrient security, water security, and soil security. So these are all the terms. Uh, it's not only uh, military security, but these securities are also equally important. So design operation plans, so based on design standards of canals and hydraulic structures are urgently required to be prepared to provide reliable, equitable, and predictable, predictable irrigation service. So I was... Uh, uh, when I was at uh, Valamtari Water and Land Management Training and Research Institute, so I was a uh, uh, training officer under National Water Management Project. I was trained by World Bank experts uh, with uh, modules they prepared, Indo-Dutch PMU modules uh, under National Water Management Project. So there we have developed design operational plans. They have selected few projects and uh, uh, we developed a design operational plans. So therefore, design operational plans based on its design standards of canals and hydraulic structures are to be prepared. And from that seasonal operational plans, based on the actual availability of water at the start of the season, it can be prepared based on these design operational plans for both Karif season and uh, Rabi season of every year. So there are seven steps involved in the preparation of operation plans. Design operational plans and seasonal operational plan were prepared for the irrigation projects included in the National Water Management Project which was aided by World Bank. So there are 12 steps involved for the actual implementation of approved seasonal operational plans. So these three reports, DOP, SOP, and EOP, uh, and I have included MDA also, this uh, I have not included. So multidisciplinary diagnostic analysis. This we did, uh, um, this we used to do uh, for the training officers uh, of water and land management training and research institute uh, at Chalagal form. So we have a Valamtari. So we have a Chalagal farm at Jagichal, near Jagichal. And we used to take training officers and we, we used to conduct the multidisciplinary diagnostic analysis. So these four reports, actually these three reports included, fourth report also is there, multidisciplinary diagnostic analysis. They are the key documents for every irrigation project for sustainable management of resources. So, so we need to develop design operation schedules and uh, from that, the uh, seasonal operation schedules. So continuous technical capacity building and managerial capacity building of all concerned stakeholders are now required on an urgent basis. So this is the outline. Now, I just uh, one by one. So you know the 
symbols so they go straight to the heart, straight into the heart than mere words so now significance and relevance of symbols so you please see here so river meeting the sea so this indicates so river ecological balance used to be maintained and scientific river basin planning used to be adopted as mismanagement causes many rivers uh, to disappear so actually if you see so the mismanagement of river basin planning so it is because of that uh, many rivers have disappeared from the world so please uh, this uh, as an indicator this is a symbol symbolic representation river meeting the sea we have to plan uh, everything uh, our systems and all depending on the principles of ecological principles and then there is higgs boson subatomic particle god's particle you please see so this is produced uh, this is the major achievement uh, of the present uh, century so therefore uh, the higgs boson subatomic particle is a mysterious particle which gives mass to the particle and uh, it is produced in the laboratory now lhc collider laboratory so hidden and subtle signals and facts that give meaning to both verbal and non verbal communication cannot be ignored so it is also an indication of spiritual intelligence each cell of living beings and each atom of visible matter are micro universes so we have micro universes in our body each cell is a micro universe each atom is also a micro universe so dr stephen covey he defines spiritual intelligence it represents our drive for meaning and connection with the infinite it is central and most fundamental of all intelligences so spiritual intelligence is not religious term it is now it is a hrd term human resource development term we find in his book famous book eighth habit so the spiritual intelligence it represents our drive for meaning and connection with the infinite and he says for other intelligences social intelligence emotional intelligence it is a central and most fundamental so therefore we need to develop as a part of the capacity building the spiritual intelligence also and uh, there is also another symbol that is a internal international space station so it represents the use of right brain oriented three dimensional spatial intelligence many of us are left brain dominant persons and we get carried away by just logic we don't think beyond logic that intuitive thinking that comes only when you use your right brain so that uh, it represents spatial intelligence with two main abilities spatial images visualization ability and ability to reason with these images and fluid intelligence that is very very important so we need to develop fluid intelligence as a part of capacity building of our irrigation stakeholders fluid intelligence is the capacity to think logically and solve problems in novel situations independent of acquired knowledge that is very important so it doesn't depend upon the acquired knowledge so independent of that fluid intelligence so i i discuss those uh, fluid intelligence i have seen uh, uh, this fluid intelligence being developed by grassroots innovators okay so that's the uh, next one is uh, the 8051 integrated circuit microcontroller used to increase the processing speed so now you please see this is a representation that uh, so compatibility and tuning is required very just like uh, similar to very large scale integration vlsi uh, systems are there so like that uh, organizations people stakeholders policy ma policy makers farmers engineers all need to be integrated okay so for effective irrigation management with high level of compatibility and tuning so this represents this micro computer uh, with its pins it represents that uh, so next cream so i am uh, i have founded a, a center for water resource engineering and management uh, at our college at gokras rangaraj institute of engineering and technology and the motto given is udara charita nam tu vasudeva kutumbakam for the magnanimous hearts the entire earth is one family so in the background of that so we see all these symbols in every a uh, slide of me now we'll go ahead so now you please see what is uh, water use efficiency water use efficiency is the production of crops per unit of water applied okay so we need to think in terms of the production of the crops crop productivity so per unit of water applied it is expressed as the weight of crop produced per unit depth of water over unit area so units are kg per centimeter per hectare so its source is irrigation theory and practice by a michael so crop water use efficiency has used two terms crop water use efficiency and field water use efficiency so crop water use efficiency and field water use efficiency so crop water use efficiency it is a ratio of crop yield to the amount of water depleted by the crop in the process of evapotranspiration so that uh, is defined and field water use efficiency it is the ratio of crop yield to the total amount of water used in the field so this terminology this terminology we have to use uh, we are going to define this in terms of this 
now fao irrigation and drainage paper number 33 yield response to water so fao means F food and agriculture organization so it defines project efficiency as the ratio between the amount of water stored in the root zone and the amount of water released at project heads headworks so this is the project efficiency so we need to improve now the project efficiencies and what and it, it also defines not water use efficiency but water utilization efficiency it defines so water utilization efficiency for total dry matter it is the amount of total dry matter produced by the crop per unit water above or transpired kg per meter cube and water utilization efficiency for harvested yield also it is defined it is amount of harvested yield produced by the crop per unit of water above or transpired kg per meter cube so these are all the terms terminology uh, which we have used which we are using uh, during these talks now I, i have told you four annual reports are very essential uh, on irrigation projects so they are uh, uh, multidisciplinary analysis that is multi multidisciplinary diagnostic analysis diagnostic analysis reports and the design operation plans and seasonal operation plan and actual developed so actually developed operation plan so these uh, four are annual reports we have to generate for sustainability of irrigation projects on urgent basis so there is sense of urgency now so what are the six steps in the diagnostic analysis reports so i underwent 10 months training course uh, it was the first and the last uh, at a water and land management training and research institute uh, so uh, we did as a part of the training as a part of the training we did multidisciplinary uh, diagnostic analysis reports we generated by visiting the field at chalagal uh, uh, under siram sagar project so uh, the you know uh, sri t hanumant rao garu was then direct general so we see this diagnostic analysis reports so it's very very essential and i underwent training also at imti tiruchi tiruchirappalli imti irrigation management training institute just like valamthari of the tamil nadu state for tamil nadu state so i underwent training for the diagnostic analysis uh, of the reports we have taken uh, they have taken us uh, to the uh, for, to the irrigation system nearby and uh, we did all the diagnostic we generated diagnostic analysis reports so evolving first thing is the six steps involved in the diagnostic analysis reports of irrigation systems so as per the colorado state university so this is a uh, evolving uh, uh, preliminary objectives so based on the knowledge gained through discussion about the performance of the live irrigation system and uh, second step is carrying out a quick reconnaissance survey of the entire system under study and third is revising the original objectives based on the observations during the reconnaissance survey so you have to revise the original objectives based on the observances observations during the reconnaissance survey conducting a very detailed and in depth field study direct observation and personal inquiries through interview collection and analysis of data carrying out an interdisciplinary analysis of the data collected and synthesizing the information as interdisciplinary team and report writing and uh, presentation so this is the these are all the steps that are needed this six the six steps are needed for diagnostic analysis report now i am just going through the so we have to see the experiments we have to conduct as a part of the multidisciplinary diagnostic analysis reports diagnostic analysis uh, the, the, you have to examine the physical system so what is a physical system irrigation system diagnostic walk through survey participatory rad, rapid appraisal double ring infiltrometer test to determine the soil infiltration rates evaluation of irrigation methods evaluation of field, field irrigation efficiencies flow measurements land leveling a topographical survey soil testing water testing experiments to evaluate cps losses so this is uh, with regard to the physical system all these we have to generate the reports so actual by doing the actual field experiments and a cropping system so crop crop cuttings experiments cropping intensity interview the farmers crop calendar land preparation and tillage operations so these are all the thing and economic system so so you have to understand the economic system of the farmers so in, you have to interview we have to conduct interview with the farmers and socio organization system interview with the farmers and perceptions and expectations regarding system performance so we have to understand them and what are the perceptions of government officials toward farmers and the perceptions of government officials about their job responsibilities and environment decision making and conflict resolution process adopted by farmers so these are all the things 
now uh, now i just uh, give you the actual report later now let me understand what are the seven steps involved in the preparation of design operation plans and and from them seasonal operation plan so the training as a part of the national water management project i was also in that process i was also a member so we developed indo dutch pmu uh, training modules so it was uh, it was interested the preparation of the training modules the responsibility was interested by the ministry of water resources to indo dutch pmu uh, uh, team that is a dutch team so and also indo dutch team uh, so they were interested this task and they used to periodically monitor periodically supervise and i was uh, part of that uh, supervising process as a faculty member uh, from balamtari uh, on behalf of national water management project training component so step 1 assess past operations including past operation rules water availability and past irrigation practices so we have to assess the past operations so including past operation rules what are the operation rules and water availability and past irrigation practices so we have to assess and uh, we have to determine the water allowance that means how much water we can give that we have to uh, determine identify options for operation rules adopt feasible operation rules prepare schedules for irrigation releases develop operation rules for specific situations and obtain approval of the operation plan now you please see uh, uh, the uh, when i was at volumtari we have uh, developed uh, the we have uh, uh, you know formed the water user associations and uh, and uh, i was involved personally in the capacity building in the training programs of uh, uh, the uh, farmers that is uh, water user association members water user association presidents uh we uh, i was involved in that so therefore uh, they have to prepare now so those uh, uh, some of the states they have uh, hand over they have handed over the systems to the farmers under uh, uh, the farmers uh, that is participate irrigation management so <clears throat> so they they so it is their responsibility now to prepare the operation plans so we have to build their capacity so now you please see the 12 steps what are the 12 steps for implementation of these operation plans so approved irrigation schedules are to be communicated to all concerned there should not be any communication gap so measurement of flow by flow measurement structures so we need to develop the flow measurement now the flow measurement is not available so but we need to develop the flow measurement uh, of the structures a monitoring and implementation process of operations irrigation operation management information systems have to be developed for all major medium and minor irrigation projects of all states similar to hydrologic information systems uh, for river irrigation uh, for river under world bank funded hydrology project and data collection centers all over the country so under hydrology project already it is in uh, uh, it is also uh, now they are implementing now uh, the hydrology project so they have developed hydrologic information systems and also decision support systems like that so we need to develop the operation management information systems of each irrigation project specifically so the data entered have to be kept online so as to have access for all at any time so network of rain gauges that is one rain gauge up to 520 square kilometers is to be provided in the entire command as per is code 49 4987 1968 and field irrigation efficiencies are to be evaluated as per is code 13062 1991 so i think many irrigation engineers are not aware of these is codes so uh, we need to create awareness through platforms like uh, iea institution of engineers uh, and uh, other college centers also so we need to enter university centers so we need to create awareness about these is codes and also another network of rain gauges is also very important to assess the uh, effective rainfall okay so now the network of rain gauges are not uh, is not available adequate uh, network drainages but as per the is code we had to provide and the uh, seepage losses from canals have to be measured as per is code 9452 parts 1 and 2 and uh, you need to assess even the seepage losses i think in this direction so valamtari has done significant work and uh, we see uh, the work they have done on seepage losses valamtari uh, even on the bhuvan portal so they have kept separately uh, what is being done to assess the seepage losses i really uh, Uh, you know congratulate the team associated with the team of valamtari associated with that work 
So adequate uh, communication network has to be provided for the information to be exchanged promptly. So we need to, uh, important thing is uh, communication. Of course, now these cells, uh, cell phones are there with every farmer. So it's very easy to communicate now. Now the government has constituted one, uh, uh, <coughs> one commission. It's very famous. Uh, every irrigation engineer knows that. Uh, Syed Hashimali re uh, irrigation report. So it's very, very famous. He was IAS officer and also he worked as a, a vice chancellor of Usman University. So as per Sri Sayed, ha Sayed Hashim Ali report, report of the Commission of Irrigation Utilization Government of FA 1982 and irrigation guide. He says in that uh, an irrigation guide operation manual is to be given to all irrigation managers, managers with the project specific information on soils, crop patterns, water requirement of crops, irrigation methods and irrigation scheduling. So I think uh, we, we have yet to make it as reality. So it is actually a recommendation by government. So we need to implement that, uh, to implement that review and evaluation of the performance of all operations have to be done at the beginning, middle and end of all irrigation season, Karif and Rabi. All the irrigation managers are required to develop the skills of participatory rural appraisal methods, PRA methods, communication skills, water reading and accounting skills, computer skills, particularly MS Excel and skills in internet operations. So next, annually diagnostic analysis of irrigation systems have to be carried out and the data ought to be entered into the computer. So this is these are all the 12 steps we need to develop. So the then actual implementation of approved season and operational plans. This report is also very essential. The report containing the actual level of implementation of approved season and operational plan during the current season is to be prepared. This gives the necessary feedback to improve further the seasonal operational plan in the next season. So the four reports, MDA, DOP, SOP, and EOP, multidisciplinary diagnostic analysis, design operation plan, seasonal operation plan, and uh, actual implementation of operation plan are the key documents for every irrigation project for sustainable management of the resources. Now, I'm showing you some sample brief report of diagnostic analysis of a minor of a main canal of a major project in Telangana. So this is on uh, Siram Sagar project. So uh, we did as a part as a part of uh, the uh, 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 project work, BTEC project work. So students, uh, we went to Siram Sagar project and we did this. And uh, so the physical system. So you please see these are the observations we have to make. There is one standing wave flume and one cross regulator near the off of the minor. So we can actually see that in the Siram project near Chalagal form. So we can actually see if you go there, so we see a standing wave flume and one cross regulator near the off of the minor. There is a insufficient communication network. So there is no practice of conjunctivitation of groundwater and surface water as the farmers completely depend on the canal water. Canal inspection road is okay. So there is widespread of weed growth in the channel. Farmers follow check basin method of irrigation for paddy crop and furrow method of Pro method for other crops. Soil type is loamy and medium textured. Infiltration equation fitted is. So we have done double ring infiltrometer test and y is equal to 0 0.345 t to the power of 0 0.7. Infiltration rate from double ring infiltrometer test is 42.5 millimeters per, per hour. Hydraulic particulars are noted. Manning's quotient n is also computed as per the IS code 0 0.029. Rate of CPS also is computed and uh, this is the rate so as per the IS code. And the groundwater is available at the depth of 7.2 meters from ground level. Irrigation schedules are not being followed. So the there are inadequate agriculture drainage facilities. So these are all the things which we have observed. So cropping system. So this is all the cropping system. The command under the miner is localized as irrigated dry, but farmers are growing paddy crops. So it is uh, localized as dry crop, but uh, farmers are growing paddy crops. So this is the major problem. So the localization concept is obsolete now. So actually, I discussed with the, uh, the former chief engineer and eminent engineer, uh, Sri Sachinan Singaru. So he himself, he was of the opinion that uh, the localization has no relevance now. So the major crops are maize, paddy, chilies, and turmeric. Farmers are keeping more than five centimeters depth of water for rice cultivation. There are no practices to enrich the soil nutrients. Farmers are applying excesses of fertilizers and pesticides. So this is a major problem. Uh, actually, farmers need to be educated uh, because uh, excessive doses of fertilizers and pesticides 
cause the soil quality and water quality so they get deteriorated soil testing is not being done land leveling is not being done to improve water application efficiency yields for the crops so it is estimated uh, so the groundnut maize and jowar on application efficiency convenience efficiency depercolation ratio is estimated water requirement efficiency is distributed distribution uniformity mean scale data and soil particle particulars are noted so this is all the uh, we have done this cropping system so now the so after the cropping system so there is a testing of well water we have tested the well water so the water quality ph electrical conductivity sodium absorption ratio turbidity test by nephelometer flame photometer test sodium and potassium uv spectrometer test fluorides so we have uh, you have uh, found out what are the content of the fluoride so economic system and socio economic system there is a questionnaire containing 14 questions to interview farmers to assess their socio economic status these questions pertain to personal characteristics types of organization giving information irrigation behavior of farmers area irrigated condition of structures performance of physical system types of crops grown water charges types of fertilizers used and source of information there is no visible impact of orders associations on irrigation behavior of the farmers interviewed whenever the farmers take the waste water from the field channels they do not close the bund causing the shortage of water to the tail end areas so this is the major irrigation misbehavior and also it comes under irrigation affects so so we need to educate the farmers farmers are medium to small in economic status uh, net income for groundnut per quintal is rupees 2350 and net income for maize and jowar per quintal is 1850 so in this way so we need to go we need to generate these reports and a sample report of design operation plan in medium irrigation project in india so this uh, we have this is a sample generated so just uh, so this is the design operation plan so based on this for the design standards so we need to develop first so the design operation plan so we have developed for a medium irrigation project of andhra pradesh so this is uh, the total number of days irrigation season main canal and uh, this is distributors distributories and distributories so june discharge is there number of days of supply mode of supply total design discharge so number of days of supply mode of supply total design discharge number of days of supply mode of supply so these irrigation schedules so by involving the farmers so we need to uh, involve the farmers so then only so we need to involve the farmers and uh, thereby so we can uh, 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 the generate uh, this so i think uh, uh, i have i have been you know participating uh, in the activities of uh, institution of hygienist telangana center and uh, i have delivered uh, for managerial capacity so you need to develop not only technical capacity building but also managerial capacity building of the uh, all stakeholders need to be developed so i have been delivering lectures uh, on management capacity building uh, at institution of hygienists for more than one decade so i just uh, show you uh, the what the various uh, uh, you know what uh, i have been this uh, uh, i have delivered many lectures i just tell you so the at institution of engineers so for manager building capacity so you please see here so from 2001 onwards so i have delivered active listening skill for managers so improving communication skills with transactional analysis and uh, in 2001 and uh, developing holistic thinking skill of managers through the reorientation of self talk for improving the performance effectiveness and efficiency so this also i have developed i have uh, uh, delivered the lecture uh, and it was received uh, uh, very well so developing the spontaneous resolution skill of the psychological conflict so you have to develop that the conflict resolution skills as and when it arises so that also i have delivered positive assertiveness skill for effective communication and win win management so this also uh, in the year 20, 2002 so this uh, i had developed and preparation and implementation of operation plan of all irrigation projects of india an urgent need in 2002 itself so i discussed this uh, and also i same paper i delivered in 2013 so central water commission has conducted uh, has organized one international conference and uh, my paper on this uh, uh, on the operation plans was selected 
and I presented a paper uh, in uh, Vignan Bhavan, New Delhi. So in 2013. So so therefore the insights of leadership for Panchatantra. So this is uh, 2003, and uh, 2003 I delivered a lecture, annual practice of disciplinary diagnostic analysis of irrigation system, a key task to increase productivity and project efficiency. So this I delivered in 2003. And another important thing is anger management and release skill for psychobiological fitness and socio-organizational fitness. So this also I did good skill, genuine and open-minded, organizational, de-addicted behavior skill to overcome the seven major addictions of 21st century to improve the organizational productivity. This uh, I delivered the lecture at Institution of Engineers in 2003. Face skill, fears, anxieties, and chicken heartedness emancipation skill to overcome the rational fears and irrational phobias of 21st century to improve the proactive decision making process. So this is very much essential now. Uh, uh, and uh, 2004, I delivered abundance mentality for the proactive focus of win-win management, scarcity mentality for the re reactive focus of win-lose management. So we need to have proactive focus. We need to develop. So the 2006 aspire skill to work with emotional intelligence for continuous development of individuals or organizations. And uh, uh, 2007, attitude of self-inquiry, self-respect and self-acceptance for even more effectiveness and efficiency. This, uh, so this is a part of the managerial capacity building, which is needed, uh, not only just irrigation, uh, in all engineering professions. So this is uh, needed. So decision support systems for effective water resource management in the world. So this is a technical talk I did, I delivered in 2007. So 2008, so preparation and implementation of uh, operation plans and irrigation projects of urgent need at Vijayawada Local Center of Institution of Engineers. I delivered the lecture. So next, uh, the 2010 role of civil engineers to achieve United Nations Million and Development Goals by the year 2015. So in 2010, I delivered that lecture. And 2011, engineering management practices for the sustainability of quality and quantity of water resources under climate change. So of course, it's a uh, bit spilani. I delivered that. So next, uh, okay. So these are all the things uh, which uh, I discussed here. So here, preparation and implementation of, uh, again, in 2017, I delivered the lecture, preparation and implementation of operational plans on sustainable water management practices, integration projects to increase water efficiency. So this uh, uh, on a seminar on sustainable water management, I delivered here. And 2017, so I discussed 17 sustainable development goals of uh, United Nations to be achieved by 2030, action planning and uh, implementation for engineers with a particular reference to civil engineers to improve the world happiness index. So this I delivered and uh, I have given the engineer RL Raju second endowment uh, on 21st December 2016. As a part of that, I delivered a lecture on 17 sustainable development goals of United Nations to be achieved by 2030. And uh, 2017, quarter provisions and specifications to mitigate natural disasters. So in this way, so why I'm telling this? So there is uh, so much of work that is uh, that is to be done. Uh, the coordination at very, very high, higher order, higher order uh, level, at a higher order level. So we need to coordinate many organizations, many individuals and all. That's why it is represented uh, uh, by the non-verbally, it is represented microcontroller, okay? So in this way, so we need to, you need to develop the both technical capacity building and also the managerial capacity building. So then only uh, we will uh, make, so irrigation, proje irrigation projects, we can, we can uh, increase, ever increase the water use efficiency of the project projects, irrigation projects. So in the absence of the will in, to work in this direction, so naturally we have constructed the irrigation projects with borrowing money and uh, so uh, thousands of crores we have invested so therefore and also they have a you know the life of a, a reservoir is limited and uh, we need to feel the sense of urgency to develop all those things uh, and uh, there must be political will also in this direction because ultimately uh, so it is only uh, we need us also uh, to conduct all these things. So I think uh, if you have any doubts, so uh, any questions, so I request you to ask. So I think uh, this is what uh, all I just want to share with you. Sir? Sir? 
హలో సార్ చెప్పండి సార్ చెప్పండి సార్ ఎస్ సో షల్ ఐ స్టాప్ షేరింగ్ now i request uh, thank you sir thank you for this thing i think questions uh, you. You take afterwards let the family members uh, i think uh, yes. uh, sir uh, subbarao sir da- second daughter anuja madam also joined i also welcome oh. uh, anuja madam namaste uh, madam thank you to today's uh, this uh, endowment lecture now i request the family members uh, anuja madam and padma madam and sanilla uh, kishor ji uh, kindly you can say few words about uh, your father and uh, this one sir yeah. madam i request you to kindly say few words yeah thanks andy um, first and foremost thank you to the institution of engineers for organizing this uh, especially chairman brahma reddy garu and uh, ex chairman dr hanuman tachari garu and um, special thanks to our distinguished speaker professor hussein garu for presenting today appreciate it um no. one of the key things my father always loved he was a evergreen student he he loved learning and even in his 60s after retiring he came to america and did the courses in american university so he would have really appreciated today's talk the other thing that he was very proud of is he was the son of a farmer and he started his uh, uh, learning in the farm and he said that um stood him in good stead all of his life so we really he would have really appreciated today's talk it was it would have been close to his uh, heart again i i i thank the audience for taking your time i know everybody is busy special thank you to the audience for being here today and if there is anything we can do to help the institution of engineers we would be very happy to participate thank you again and uh, in my father's memory i thank each and every one of you thank you madam thank you thank sir you. it's our uh, pleasure to honor all these uh, great uh, engineers we are actually honoring uh, now 19 uh, engineers who are having endowment lectures so thank you very much and we look forward in meeting again and uh, sometime so <clears throat> now i think uh, padma madam no sir yeah, uh, yeah. madam anuja madam want to say anything I also just wanted to say thank you and I echo my sister's words. I think today's lecture specifically would have been really close to my father's heart since it was about farming community and also water conservation, two of the biggest topics that he really loved talking about. So thank you again um, to everyone and to the speaker specifically for today's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Uh, Kishor Garu. I think Kishore is not connected, Andy. He is... Uh, oh, okay, madam. Your name, name appeared for some time. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you, madam. Now, <clears throat> now may I request our uh, Andri Secretary Garu, Dr. Venkata Subbhai Garu, mm-hmm. kindly to propose a vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. Brahma Reddy, sir. A respected uh, speaker, Professor Dr. Mohammad Hussain, FIE. Department of Civil Engineering, uh, Gograza Rangaraz Institute of Engineering and Technology, Hyderabad, Engineer B. Brahma Reddy, FIE Chairman IA Telangana State Center, Engineer B. Prasanth, Committee Member and Convener of today's event, past Presidents, past Vice Presidents, Council Members of IEI, past Chairman, past Honorary Secretaries, Committee Members and Corporate Members of IEA Telangana State Center, uh, budding engineers, invitees and family members of engineer revi subbarao uh, padma madam anuja madam and kishor garu ladies and gentlemen good evening to all it gives me immense pleasure to perform the pleasant duty of proposing what of thanks on behalf of the telangana state center of iei and on my own behalf i convey our sincere and profound thanks to the speaker professor dr mohammad hussain fie professor uh, griet hyderabad for delivering the excellent lecture on this endowment lecture day i also thank the dignitaries past presidents of iei past chairman of iea tsc past honorary secretaries of iea tsc council members committee members corporate members family members of university subbarao garu 
ఇంద్రసేన రెడ్డి గారు జగన్మోహన్ రెడ్డి గారు పికే వెంకటరమణయ్య గారు నారాయణమూర్తి గారు కమిటీ మెంబర్స్ సుబ్బిరెడ్డి గారు సత్యనారాయణ గారు అండ్ ఆల్ హూ మేడ్ ఇట్ కన్వీనియంట్ టు అటెండ్ దిస్ ఈవెంట్ ఐ ఆల్సో థ్యాంక్ ది రిప్రజెంటేటివ్స్ ఆఫ్ మీడియా ఫర్ అన్స్టెంటెడ్ సపోర్ట్ టు కవర్ ది ప్రొసీడింగ్స్ ఆఫ్ ది ఈవెంట్ థ్యాంక్స్ టు వన్ అండ్ ఆల్ నా ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ కైండ్లీ స్టాండ్ ఫర్ నేషనల్ యాంథమ్ సార్ దెర్ ఈస్ ఏ స్మాల్ ప్రాబ్లమ్ ఇన్ ది షేరింగ్ ఆఫ్ ద స్క్రీన్ నేహ విల్ స్టార్ట్ జనగణమన్న జనగణమన్న సార్ బ్రహ్మారెడ్డి గారు చెప్పండి సార్ అది ప్లే చేస్తున్నాడు కానీ దీంట్లో రావట్లేదు మనమే స్టార్ట్ చేద్దాం సార్ ఓకే ఓకే స్టార్ట్ సార్ స్టార్ట్ సార్ ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ కైండ్లీ స్టార్ట్ జనగణమన్న పంజాబ సింధు జనగణ మంగళదాయక జయ హే భారత భాగ్య విధాత జయ హే జయ హే జయ హే జయ 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 హే జయ హే జయ జయంతి థ్యాంక్స్ ఫర్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.